Johannes, normally when a machine drives in through those doors into your visitor center, it is absolutely shining, polished, like Katie up here in front is the 8.5 that did the tour. This 9.7 has got a little bit of dust on it. How? Why? So this shows us the reality. So this machine has just been built and has finished her first test run. I say her because we named her Ruth and we had the pleasure and the honor that you were the guy who did the first calibrations on our test track. So the machine has already been driven for a short time, taking care that all the functions work. And this is the reason why you also see some dust on it. Absolutely. And Johannes, look, you and I have been chatting lots and lots over the years about the good points, the bad points, the fun points, all to do with foragers. But for me, for me personally, the last couple of days has been really, really special for exactly the reasons you've just said, Rob. Yeah. This was an idea we kind of, we batter them about every time we chat. I mean, you know, I have thousands of them. They never stop. Yeah. But what is special about this one, I just didn't drive a machine. This is the, the point I want to get across, Rob. We drove the one, yeah. which was a big challenge. Yeah. What was involved in making this happen? Yeah, well, look, so you know yourself, Gareth, you know, this started off, as you say, in a field down in County Limerick when this <laughs> idea first came to fruition. You know, we then met in Lisburn. We went through the specs and, you know, maybe this final decision of model wasn't necessarily the, where you wanted to end up. It is now, though. It is now, absolutely, yeah. And I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear we've swung, swung your vote. So again, putting it in perspective, this machine has been ordered as a demo machine out of the Johnson Gilpin account. Uh, Gareth helped us when we decided on the spec, all right? We showed the guys here what happens when the order gets placed by the dealer and where it ends up in our order fulfillment department and how they then transfer all that information to the various lines within the factory and how all the parts all come together to create this brilliant machine. <laughs> brilliant. You had to add that in there, brilliant machine. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> How long do you know me now? But like, Johannes, <laughs> what's happening here at Sweetbrook and is, don't get me wrong, we're very blessed, we're very privileged at Grassmen. We get to see lots of factories and stuff, but it's, you know, like, like Mannheim, the tractors, the efficiency, it just screams timed perfection. So I have to say many gears have to work perfectly and match each other. And that's what we experience, right? Even if we don't have the volume of Mannheim and a very short timing of the individual steps, yes, we have bigger steps at one tag, but then we are exactly timed like that. All the parts, we have so many different options and variants. We want to build machines matching always the customer requirement and those are different as you know you in ireland you focus on grass other countries are focusing more on corn some want long length other want short length so you cannot say one machine fits all so you have to match everything perfectly and that's also what we do here and we have times we exactly know when we move in the band between the stations and our guys here have done a phenomenal job like the supervisors the managers but also the workers they have told us you have to be that time here and it exactly worked like that. And this is how it should be. Like, unbelievable. And, and like, this is not talking for the sake of, we want to tell a camera a story. This was precision timing. Yes, a tractor from start to finish is, the last time I was at Mannheim is 4.5 minutes. I know it can be just over three, but it was running at 4.5 minutes. That's start to finish on the final assembly line. Forager, slightly different. You're into the second day before it comes off the line, but it's a completely different animal of a machine. But these guys are moving, slinging, swinging, <laughs> big stuff with precision. header Johannes we have been preaching screaming shouting for years we needed a better stronger bigger head you have delivered so what have you done to this header so starting where we came from with the 639 with the four time bars yes thinking about all the different conditions we have to match very light crops and very heavy crops and with machines up to 800 horse 850 horse it was okay, it was able to feed them very well. But then we introduced our bigger machines, the 9000 series with the Harvest Motion and now with the Harvest Motion Plus concept. And we shifted the border and the limitations further out. 
And we had to come also with a different pickup header because we want to enable our customers also with the big machines to load them against the engine and not just what the pickup can take. And with a new 30R header, we for sure can do it. It has six time bars. So we removed all components we needed, which needed a lot of maintenance, like chains. So there are no chains anymore on that pickup to drive the reel or to drive the auger. These are all gear sets. So it's really nearly maintenance free and it's very robust and really built for your tough conditions in Ireland. And together with the 97, with the JD 18X, I think that's a perfect match. And it's something that you said to me, Johannes, you know, in the early days when we first met was that every country thinks they have the toughest conditions for one reason or another, which is a very valid point because obviously I'm sitting, yes, in an office currently looking at some of the feedback, but I'm seeing machines getting stuck big bulks of crops this year in Australia due to the rains and, and the heat and the different conditions. But on a large, Ireland is the king of grass and difficult conditions because it has it all. It doesn't just have one year where it's particularly heavy because it has almost, there's wet conditions at some point every year. Yeah. Probably the ultimate package of difficult conditions definitely comes, I would say, from Ireland. But everywhere does have their, their issues. Oh, sure. And I would say that, you know, and we've watched it, we've been very blessed. Big DJ Mackay, Big James has been running the new 30R. You've changed the, the, there's definitely a difference there in the top feed roller. That's different. That's more aggressive looking. Yeah, so again, we have now have two options. We still offer what we had before, so the straight cut feed roller, for want of better terms. But this is what we call our, our heavy duty upper feed roll, okay? So again, we've gone for the spiral design. So again, those of you familiar with John Deere machines in the past on 6000s and 7000s, we had a similar design. But likewise, I mean, we showed it to Gareth in the factory. There's a significant difference both in size of those feed rollers and the thickness of the actual material that's in there, you know. So they're, they're built to handle the big horsepower, the big swaths, and again, the wider feed roll, feed roll opening that we have with these machines. So on the subject of feed rollers and bouncing back to you, Johannes, some competitors think you need more than four. John Deere say you only need four. There are physical disadvantages with more than four. There are physical advantages with more than four. You've stayed with four. Yes. Have you thought about six? So, uh, you know, when we started with the concept of the machines, there were some circumstances we wanted to meet. It's not the question of four or six feed rows. It's the question of the overall dimensions you want to achieve, how far or how further out you want to have the header. And this was one of the reasons to have a good balance of the machine, not too much weight at the front. Don't bring it out too far, especially the big heads. It's not such a big topic, maybe in grass, but in other crops. If you think about the 490 plus header, uh, the big 12 row header, and if you move that further out because of another set of feed rolls, yes, that wouldn't really help machine balance. But on the other side, key is really that you have a perfect compaction before the cut, right? So our radial arc design for the feed roll swing with all mechanical to push it down and a hydraulic dampener to dampen out the banging. So this is a perfect match. So you can ensure that you have a perfect compaction. So in our opinion, what we observed and the feedback we received regarding chop quality, it's not required to have another set of feed rolls. We are very happy with the four feed rolls we have. And on that, you've stayed with calmed. Your big six row oh, pick up, yeah. header, you've stayed with fully calmed yeah. because you believe in the short distance. Correct. Yeah. And you're talking there about your hydraulic damper. That was one of the things we picked up on the last time we were here because it, the, some of the early ones weren't. Yes, exactly. So in the very early phase, I would say during the limited production season, we learned some more. And we already knew when we come to production and it was start of production 2015, we already knew that we will retrofit once everything was available. It's also a question that to get the parts in on time, but we made this decision also based on testing in UK and Ireland, or especially in long length of chop. When everything is very quick yeah. and the windrow or whatever becomes uneven, yeah, you, that helps for sure. Is there still a big difference in how these foragers are specced going around the world? Because obviously our viewers are around the world. Of course, we're focused very much, Rob, on the Irish and the UK market. Yeah. Are there massive differences? Well, look, you've seen it yourself. You've been around the factory. You've made lots of remarks to me. Jeez, look at the tires on that. Look at that big wide machine going to the US, for example, with the wider axle and the wider stance. Likewise, we've seen other machines with different emission regulations that are going to non-EU or tier four, tier five countries as well. So, so your process right up into your 9000s, everything's the same. The, the, the most notable difference now has to be at the back end. 
which is something you and Rob and every John Deere person seems to be absolutely in love with is this new 18 litre. I fully agree. So um, when we had the first units running on our test machines, we could feel from the very beginning that the torque characteristics and the behavior of that engine is really unique. So uh, we call that system Harvest Motion Plus. So we go with maximum 1800 engine RPM, but we give it even more torque rise and lower RPM. So you can really push it and don't need to be nervous if a lump is coming, it will just, just digest this because there is always torque reserve. And that was a key one. We gave the test to the engineers. We already knew in the future we will replace on the 9.7 the V12 with the 18 liter. I mean, if you want to talk about potential controversy here, that's exactly what this 9.7 is. You've taken the 9.7, you've taken out V12, put in six cylinder and give it better performance characteristics than the outgoing 97. That's a lot of to get in there. Is that really possible? Are we going to be disappointed with the 97 on an 18 liter versus the V12? Are we? Be I, honest. I am sure you will not. Uh, but I let Rod comment on it. Have you experienced already 9.7s in the field? 9.7s uh, in the field, not yet. But we've had 9.5s, 9.6s. You've been out with some of them locally. But likewise, what we've seen with the 9.5 and the 9.6, the torque, the power, the Harvest Motion Plus, Johannes has mentioned it. It really is going to be there for the machine. How it reacts, how it can get up to speed again quicker because you've only got six cylinders to get back up to speed when you do load it down. Likewise, as well, you've got this 9.7 compared to the, the V12 9.7, we've upped the horsepower. So this machine now is 800 horsepower rated with your Harvest Motion Plus max power to load it down at 1350 engine RPM or 825. So again, we know we can get there. On top of that, we're also a big thing is going to be fluid consumption. You know, so we know bringing that, we can bring lower fuel, fuel consumption per ton chopped. And likewise, the big thing with this engine, you know what it is, I know what it is. We all shout about it. It's no ablu, isn't it? And you know, we know that's one thing customers don't like. Farmer Gareth, who's a customer of Geffen's at Johnson Gelpin, not for foragers because he's, he's, he's only a farmer That's doing it. his own grass. But what I'm saying to you is right, what I want to know is can you tell me, and this is the genuine question, can we put in his hundred odd acres of grass? Because I'm coming from the old nutritional side of me, so you can tell me tons of dry matter, tons, ME, yeah. protein, yeah. and you're confident. Yeah. Okay. And if I take, and I take a printout from all that, Johannes, and I get. The feed advisors to go through the winter time, it'll, it'll, it'll be close. It's never going to be the same. Fermentations, things happen. Exactly, you know. but we are sure that it works. For the Sugars. On harvested, yeah. fresh harvested material, we measure on the go with our harvest lab sensor and you get all this data recorded based on GPS coordinates to get the evaluation of your field. You can make decisions out of that what to do next year. Where can I improve? What are the good areas, the bad areas? What have I done on this field? Have I fertilized more, more slurry, whatever, you know, those things can be taken into account to drive further decisions. And yes, we are confident it works very well. Without costing too much time and effort, it's going to take a little bit of effort to set these things up. You think we could do that, Rob? You would come out, you could spend a bit of a day, we put in the silage at HQ, and you will give me these printouts that yeah, I'm looking providing for. we can make, make it work and the weather and everything like that, no problem. We That's can, always an issue, we, but we I can, think we can. We can I think all we can, we can do is try, but well, yeah. And we have to do that for another very special reason. A certain young lady, will want to drive this machine. Well, I guess so, yeah. And that's yeah. where Ruth works. So if you don't do that, you'll break her heart. We've already do you want, do you want Ruth's broken heart in your conscience? We've well? already made, made her day, <laughs> you know? But you know, that was an absolute magical moment to be stood there just when the cab swung around and it came into view and to see Ruth's reaction when that all happened. It would make anybody happy. And it's a very, very special thing. So, you know, thanks very much for that. Delighted that you've took us around let us see the particular machine at its different stages. Also with an overview in all of the factory, a look at the combines, it's well. pretty cool what's going on there too. I know I'm not a massive combine guy, but I think that's pretty cool. I love to see that we've now got foot stirrups just poking out of the cab. That's a big important thing. James Mackay, well done for pushing on with that one. And I'm sure there are modifications and changes coming, Johannes, in the future, because there has to be, there always has to be. Yes, and we will never stop. And as we have pointed out in the beginning, this uh, upper front feed roll, this has been delivered also based on requirements and customer requirements. Customers told us, especially my friends from Ireland and UK, they have told me we need that again. We have good experience with that in the past and we listened and we did. And also we look to, hey, what do we need in the future? So 
Of course, the forage harvest as well is quite an emotional thing as well. We always want more horsepower. As you already said, you wanted to have a 9.9, but we think the 9.7 is also a very good one. The key at the end is also, yes, we need the right horsepower for our customers. We need the right efficiency and we need a thing the operator wants to drive. And those are the things we, of course, look to and will work on for the future. And uh, yeah. you can be and excited what's coming in the future. So the John Deere Forager range starts where? Today, it starts with the 8.1 at 431 horsepower. Nine liter. Nine liter entry level. Then we already go to the 13.5 on the A2. This was new for model year 23. There it starts at 465 horsepower and ends with the 8.6 at 625 horse. Standard body. Standard body. 8,000, everything is standard body. Yes. And the next step are our wide body machines and it starts with the 9.5. The 9.5, the 9.6, and the 9.7, they all feature the JD 18X, 18 liter engine, no def and harvest motion plus. And on top of that, we have another cherry on the cake. It's our V12 models, the 9.8 and the 9.9 with a known liter V12, as you already did. Genuinely, that is the range of foragers. You think about the options available to different guys in different spectrums in the market. This is what I'm getting at from your 8 to 9 liter, 13 and a half. There's a forager product range covering four engines, which is choice at every end and knife drum configurations from 40 up to 64 and this is featuring the 64 yeah which means it'll be an ideal machine for the biogas but for the dairy men we can take the half set of knives out i mean yeah. we used to do that you know that's a very common thing yeah, in the multi-cut yeah. that's that's the beauty of our drum you know half set three quarter set we can have that functionality so like, what's not to like about her that's that's what we keep telling people guys yeah. I've had an absolutely fantastic time and just to see that, you know, I drove that out through those doors like and we've literally drove around the factory, we've had some fantastic experiences with John Deere. This is on a very personal level. But Johannes, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for pulling all the stops out here over the last couple of days. Understandably, Rob, been very much involved in this, but I, I now know <laughs> what's involved. And especially after we made the forager program and the tractor program, we've realised just how professional and how efficient the, the company is. And big companies that are very efficient like that there can struggle with change. I think it's special. It's a, it's a small unit. It's a little, little bit different than a large tractor facility, but you can see how the people work together, how open they are to things like that and still keep the schedules. That's yeah. the important thing. That was, that was incredible. And you know, this is the home since, did you tell me 1992? Yes, that's yeah. when we started Forage Harvester production in Zweibrücken. Yeah. 1992 with the 6010 series. And previously, I think it was American, Autumn, wasn't it, with, yeah. a five, with a yes. 5000. So, 1992, all foragers worldwide have been made right here on this soil. Correct. Exactly. Right. That's good. Hmm? That's very good. Guys, thank you. Thank you very much. Um.